very excited to introduce um, this concept uh, with him and by him and for him. He is incredibly open-minded, and I want you to be open-minded as he also introduces this concept um, to this area, which everybody knows when you start throwing out the word marijuana, people can then get in a little bit tense, but this is an absolutely brilliant idea, and I like the research he's done, and so if you will, um, Joan. Show what you Perfect. Thank you so much. That was so sweet. Thank you, uh, Professor Abeda. I'm going to be blushing for the rest of this presentation. <laughs> so, guys, my name is John Owsley, just like she said, and I'm an accounting major with a minor in taxation. And honestly, I love my degree. I'm one of those few people, and there's some people in the front row too, that actually like taxes, and I really enjoy it. <laughs> and um, I love learning about the taxation law behind it as well. So with this presentation, I was like, okay, how do we get millennials, people my age, to even care about taxes at all? If you throw a few blunts in there, we throw some marijuana, <laughs> we got a crowd like this, and I'm so excited to see you all. This is awesome. So I'll start off and I'll just do some disclaimers. So this presentation is not about the ethics behind marijuana. So it's not about anything about that. It's not about the effect that it has on a community or even uh, where's the best place to buy a bowl in the San Luis Valley. I don't know that, if you do a presentation on that, you'll get a lot more people than I did. <laughs> but, if you, and it's also not about getting other states to legalize it or why we legalized it in the first place. It's legalized, we might as well take advantage of it, and that's what this presentation is about. So going into that, the research of where this money is going, the taxation law behind that, and then the hypothetical situation if Alamosa County did enact and allow recreational sale of marijuana in our county, what would happen? So going to the abstract, uh, Professor Beta, what we do in her classes is we don't just follow tax law, but we actually research it. So we'll go into why we're doing this. We'll go into court cases and see this is why this tax isn't being enacted. Then with my position as student trustee, I would hear a lot with administration, how do we get Adam State to have more alternative revenue streams? And what a great way to do that is to get marijuana tax revenue. So going from that, let's do our objectives. So we want to conceptually understand what our marijuana taxation laws are. Then track down where that money goes to and then create a hypothetical situation of how that money would affect Alamosa County and Adams State. So with that in mind, let's do a little bit of a background. I wanna give some legislative history of on November 6, 2012, Amendment 64 was enacted which seems like yesterday, I, I don't know, that seems like crazy to me. But it wasn't until 2014, the beginning of 2014, that it was actually legalized. So what happened in between there was Governor Hickenlooper wanted to make sure that it was regulated correctly, that the laws were enacted, um, and that we had it safe for Colorado. What was, um, a lot of people believe that the reason that Amendment 64 was even passed was that because it promised millions of dollars in sales tax revenue, and they were correct. What I found online was this total retail marijuana revenue, this left-hand side, and then I calculated these um, right here on the right. And so in 2014, our first year, we had, in, we had $700 million in retail revenue. Our second year, we had nearly $8 billion, and then in our third year, we had $1.3 billion in revenue. If we times that by the 12.9% in our retail sales tax, we get $90 million, 130 million for the second year and 170 million for the third year. So obviously you can see that it's growing and it'll just continue to grow until eventually obviously it'll plateau out, but it has been huge for our economy here in Colorado. So with that in mind, I found actually an article that talked about that 130 million right here, so that 130 million in 2015. So what it kind of put in perspective was the total amount of sales that we got uh, revenue in Colorado for all taxes. So that was um, income taxes, property taxes, any of those taxes. It was $10.3 billion in taxes in 2015. So with that in mind, it's 1.3% of the total is, one, is that $130 million. So you might be thinking, 1.3%, what can you do with 1.3%? But if anyone got 1.3%, they could take you know a little bit of upgrades, and that's what Colorado did. This um, article also had this flowchart, and this is my favorite flowchart of all time. It is amazing. <laughs> I think it's so cool that it, it's a great way to um, comprehend how this works. So I'm not really gonna cover anything on this right side because it's about business fees and patent fees, and I wanted to focus more on the tax law. So over here on the left-hand side, we have these four bubbles at the top, and this is um, the 15% uh, excise tax on retail marijuana, 
And then these three sales tax, both the 2.9 for retail, the 2.9 for medical, and then the 10% special sales tax on um, retail marijuana. So we'll go into each one of these. So the first one is the 15% excise tax on retail marijuana. And what I found on that was excise 23, which states why exactly how much that 15% is um, of the total. It also, in Amendment 64, decided that this entire tax would go towards education, which we'll get towards into a minute. But the rest of the three actually all fall under the same bill, Sales 93. And under Sales 93, it says the medical is subject to 2.9, but that the retail is subject to the 2.9 and the additional 10% special tax. So from that information, let's start going down through, through the flow chart. So over here, we have the education part of it. And the first two triangles will go into what I found for that. And that was CLCS issue brief 1604, which basically states that the first 40 million will go towards school construction. So when a school wants to build a new library, they have a leaky roof in their library. Um, it's not all about libraries, but <laughs> um, anything that they want to do a project for, they're able to apply for this fund. The excess of that excise tax is all goes to the public school fund, which is actually part of our TABOR. So if you guys know anything about TABOR, which is an entire beast on its own, we could talk about that at the next student scholar days if we want. <laughs> but um, that goes all into there, and then the excess of that actually comes back. So I don't know if any of you noticed, but you got an extra $13 in your Colorado um, like re re refund this year, and that's because of the excise, excess of the excess of this public school fund went back to you which I don't need $13, give it to the kids, let's go on. Um, <laughs> so, and what I thought originally was, all we had to do was enact this in our county, and then we would get money. So, you know, they say it goes to education. Why don't it go straight to education? Well, it only goes to K through 12 education for that public school fund. The rest of those taxes, though, for the sales, all go into this marijuana tax cash fund. So all three of these, but only 85% goes into the uh, tax cash fund and then 15% of the special goes into the local share, which we'll get to in just a moment. But the marijuana tax cash fund, what I found for that was Colorado Code 3928.8501, which basically states that the General Assembly has the authority to put that money towards anything they like. So they could put that to law enforcement, the promotion of public health, anything that they want. Um, these are just the following purposes are options, basically. Um, over here, I found the actual distribution table of 2017, and I wanted to pull out some key figures. So we had $7 million going to public awareness marijuana education campaign, uh, $7.2 million going to substance abuse prevention, and $7.9 million going to marijuana enforcement division. And so those were the three highest on the graph, but you, as you can see, there's, it's kind of blurry, but there's a lot of different Department of Law, Public Health. Um, right down here, and I didn't pull it out, but the Department of Higher Education, they're actually giving $900,000 to CSU Pueblo for cannabis research. So in theory, if we actually were able to get this hemp, industrial hemp thing, maybe we would even be able to talk to the General Assembly and see if we can get some of that money from that fund. But what we would get fund, er, from the fund that I want to talk about today is the local share of the 10%. So this is 15% of the 10% special sales tax. And what I found for this was House Bill 17-1203, which states that local governments have the authority to put this money to whatever they like. So we can put it towards roads, we can put it to a new library, we can put it to recycling. Um, and what I also found was Sarah, Senator Larry Crowder was a, one of the prime sponsors, and so one of our own. I thought that was pretty cool. Shout out to Larry. Um, <laughs> and then from that, let's get some perspective. So okay, even if we had, we finally get Alamosa County to let us do the sale. Are we even going to make money? And so the Castilla County, which is located right next to us, so this is right here, and we are right there, and they, in the month of February of 2017 alone, made $218,000 in marijuana revenue. From that perspective, it can be a conservative estimation to do $100,000 a month for our county. And so that's just conservative because we're still close to the border. We have a college, y'all. And people, you know, it's a college. <laughs> I think it's half. Um, and so I believe it would be a very conservative amount for $100,000 a month. So let's do some calculations off of that. With that in mind, we have $1.2 million in marijuana revenue um, a year times a 10% times a 15% share of it would give us $18,000. Yet, according to Nine News, 
it reduces by 2% on July 1st of 2017. So with that in mind, we're actually going to do 8% and then times that by 15%, and we'll get 14,400. So that 14,400, y'all, you guys are thinking, oh, that's not a lot. What are, what are we going to do for 14,400? And you know, that's how we're going to, we need to argue, first of all, and figure out how we can argue to the county and get that money. So these are my strategies to get um, the county to give us the money and not put it towards roads or any recycling. And that would, <laughs> you know, I love recycling, but. Um, so according to a report created by Jacob Heaton and Dr. Liz Thomas Hensley, we have a total economic impact in 2014 and 2015 of $78 million. So we just say that we're giving money towards a back to our a community. We have an economic impact in the San Luis Valley. Y'all can give us 14,400, like that's not a big deal. We also say that most of our students are gonna be the one contributing to this marijuana sales tax. And that's just a fact, y'all. People are driving from here to Castilla County getting their marijuana and coming back. Might as well just keep it in our own county and get that economic development. Then let's also talk about, about the scholarships and initiatives that can help benefit the entire San Luis Valley, which I talked about on the next slide, but uh, that could be industrial hemp. If we get that program going, that could benefit the entire San Luis Valley. So it isn't even worth it. So just like Nine News did and put in perspective of how much money we have. So our total revenue in 2016 was $45 million. So 14,400, uh, increase would be a 0.0319% increase. So I know that's not a lot, yet 14,400 could go towards industrial hemp research, drug and alcohol prevention programs, or at least how to do it safely, and then scholarships as well. So overview, just to overview everything that we talked about today, the two taxes that describe what the percentages are taxed on marijuana are exercise 23, which is the 15% excise tax on retail marijuana, and then sales 93, which is the 2.9% on both medical and retail, and 10% on the special for retail. And then how are they being spent was CLCS issue brief 1604, which basically states the first 40 million will go to the school construction, and the excess of that would go towards our TABOR fund for public school funds. And then the Colorado Code 3928.8501, states that the marijuana tax cash fund has the authority, so the General Assembly has the authority to put that money towards anything they'd like. House Bill 17-1203 gives us the authority as a government, a local government community or municipality, to put that money towards whatever we'd like. Going back to our flow chart, now that y'all know exactly what's going on, we got just going one more time, we'll talk about the 15% going towards schools, this all going to the cash fund, and then this going towards our local share. And if, out, if we did allow recreational marijuana in our county, the sale of recreational marijuana, and we made a, approximately $100,000 in revenue, we make $14,400 each year, approximately. And we can use that money to do initiatives and scholarships if we can convince the county to give it to us. So references, y'all, I don't got time for MLA for many. This isn't a research paper, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you guys so much. These are some possible scholarship names. I'm pretty proud of this one. This one's really good. And if there's any questions, I would love to answer them now. <laughs> so the Southerners passed the, the 64 it, with the thought in mind that it would benefit um, schools. Yes. And, but you mentioned it was only Yes. Do you feel that at least that happened, that K-12 did get funding via 64? See, it's very interesting because it, with the money going towards the public school fund in Tabor, Tabor's already a pie. It's the source of the pie. So that money going towards it, it still kind of works towards it, but I think the main thing is that construction fee, which really I would rather see it go towards books or education initiatives. Um, so honestly, I believe that we could enact something up well first of all we need to get rid of the taper honestly but <laughs> have something that goes directly towards education instead of this public school fund thank you yeah. on that note i showed a documentary on when they passed this in one of my classes and they interviewed some teachers and they talked about it and i think it was in one of the articles that i had them read and they the teachers talked about how in their viewpoint they weren't seeing the impact of this money going towards education kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And even the idea that potentially, okay, we could build a really awesome building, a really awesome school, 
we can't pay the people to go in to actually teach the kids, or we can't pay for the better quality teacher, potentially those kind of things. Yeah. Did you find anything sort of along those lines? I know you were looking more sort of on a objective yeah. tax kind of thing. Can you <laughs> speak to that at all a little for bit? For sure, for sure. I was, I was kind of hoping that I'd have more time to talk a little bit more about the opinions of where that money was going and how it's being spent. Yeah, I was thinking it'd be better to focus on just the actual taxation law and where it'd be going. Yeah. Um, from my perspective, I have noticed a lot of people are kind of frustrated because they haven't seen the actual effects of this money. And um, maybe there's specific counties that have been getting it, um, but many people don't believe that they know where this is going and what's happening to them. So I guess that would be the answer to that. I do believe it would be awesome if it would go towards teachers or anything like that. That would be amazing. Do you know why the tax is lowering by 2017? Yeah, so I was trying to figure that out as well. I couldn't find exactly what the reason were, was, but I think it's because the tax year starts, because they do in July to July, or mm -hmm. July to June, and so that's the next year for the fiscal year. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I'd have to get back to you on that. So. Thank you. Oh, it's okay. Okay. So <laughs> some of the some of the marijuana money does go in the same bucket as best for best grants, best yeah. school grants. So the right? best school grants. So basically, if we go back to this flow chart, let's look right. at that. Right. Show the best. Yeah. So that's that's the fund that I was talking about, and so only the fifteen percent excise tax goes towards that, but the rest of it goes to the marijuana tax cash fund, and that goes to the following agencies that we talked about earlier. Um, but that's just that 15%. Does that answer your question? So thank you guys so much for coming. Is there any other questions?